Solitude may be associated with a greater risk of undiscovered emergencies, but it is probably the risk that should be reduced and not the solitude itself, which may be cherished. So, that's a big point. You know, just because you are alone doesn't necessarily mean loneliness is involved. All right, well, this is going to be a continuing discussion. We're going to talk more. We're going to look more at this research about uh, aloneness and what it means. But right now, we're going to move on to what I was telling you about before uh, how air pollution can affect behavior. Fascinating little study. Let's take a look. Uh, you know, we all know air pollution can have serious effects on physical health. Uh, it's been linked to stroke, heart attacks, diabetes, low birth weight, and, pre and preterm births. Uh, but new research shows that it may also lead to unethical behavior, including crime and cheating. Uh, and this study comes from Columbia Business School uh, and uh, uh, was over a nine year period where they collected data on air pollution and crime for 9,360 cities in the United States. And the results showed that cities with higher levels of air pollution tended also to have higher levels of crime. An association that remained uh, even after the researchers accounted for various other factors that might help explain a higher crime rate, including the poverty rate, unemployment rate, and the number of law enforcement employees. Additionally, in a series of novel experiments, the researchers found that participants asked to imagine living in polluted areas were more likely to cheat on unrelated tests than those who were asked to picture themselves living in clean areas. The researchers attributed the cheating and by extension the crime rates in polluted cities to anxiety, which earlier studies have linked to air pollution. So uh, uh, it apparently raises this issue of whether air pollution can affect uh, you know, our behavior and, uh, as well as our mental and physical health. Um, they first apparently dis uh, discovered this link between pollution and anxiety uh, in 2015 uh, when they looked at uh, more than 71,000 women uh, between the ages of 57 and 85. Uh, and they were asked about their anxiety and whether they viewed themselves as warriors or had certain phobias. And the results showed that 15% of them had high symptoms of anxiety, uh, but not necessarily anxiety disorders. The association between anxiety and air pollution was based on the women's exposure to fine par particle pollution where they live. Uh, so that's an interesting uh, uh, bit of knowledge that I did not know about, that air pollution has a link to anxiety, which can then affect your behavior. Uh, and cause behavior such as cheating and that sort of thing. And now gratitude and sleep. Uh, apparently uh, a study of can Canadian university students who are having trouble sleeping uh, due to their minds racing with all kinds of thoughts and worries, speaking of anxiety, uh, and what they did was to spend 15 minutes before bedtime listing all the things for which they were grateful. And then a UK study in, in Manchester uh, looked at 400 adults who responded to questionnaires about gratitude, sleep, and thoughts they had prior to falling asleep. And the results showed that gratitude was related to having more positive thoughts and fewer negative ones, and that allowed them to fall asleep faster. tends to make people feel less grateful uh, than individuals who do have a good night's sleep. So it's kind of uh, all connected there. And then another Berkeley study found that individuals who recorded how well they slept every night for two weeks, as well as their daily feelings of gratitude, found their expressions of gratitude diminished when they didn't sleep well. And some even reported feeling selfish the day after a poor night's sleep. Yeah, I mean, I've been lucky in not having a lot of sleep problems, but I remember having a, a good friend, uh, someone I was in a relationship with for a while, who uh, had sleep problems and uh, just would get more and more uh, 
cranky and uh, aloof uh, as you know the sleep issues continued. So I, I think there's real truth to that. All right, now it's time for me to uh, do our uh, guided meditation for this week, and it is a sitting meditation, and uh, it will help you just to learn to simply be and to look within yourself with mindfulness and equanimity. Learning how to be alone. Allow yourself to switch from your usual mode of doing to a mode of non-doing, simply being. As you allow your body to become still, bring your attention to the fact that you are breathing. Become aware of the moment, movement of your breath as it comes into your body and leaves your body. Not manipulating the breath in any way or trying to change it. Simply being aware of it and of the feelings associated with breathing. And observing the deep breath down in your belly. Feeling the abdomen as it expands quietly on the in-breath and falls back towards your spine on the out-breath. Be totally here in each moment with each breath. Not trying to do anything. Not trying to get any place. Simply being with your breath. You will find that from time to time your mind will wander off into thoughts, fantasies, anticipations of the future, of the past, worrying, memories, whatever. When you notice that your attention is no longer here and no longer with your breathing, and without judging yourself, bring your attention back to your breathing and ride the waves of breathing fully conscious of the duration of each breath moment to moment. Every time you find your mind wandering off the breath, gently bringing it back to the present, back to the moment to moment observing of the flow of your breathing, using your breath to help you tune into a state of relaxed awareness and stillness. Now as you observe your breathing, you may find from time to time that you are becoming aware of sensations in your body. As you maintain awareness of your breathing, see if it is possible to expand the field of your awareness so that it includes a sensation of your body as whole as you sit here. Feeling your body, your whole body from head to toe and becoming aware of all the sensations within your body. Being here with whatever feelings and sensations come up in any moment without judging them, without reacting to them, just being fully here, fully aware of what you're experiencing. And again, whenever you notice that your mind wandered off, just bringing it back to your breathing and your body as well as you sit here, not going anywhere, not doing anything simply being, simply sitting, moment to moment, being fully present, fully with yourself. Now as you sit here once again allowing the field of your awareness to expand, this time expanding your awareness to include thoughts as they move through your mind. So letting your breathing and sense of your body be in the background and allowing the thinking process itself to be the focus of your awareness. And rather than following individual thoughts and getting involved in the content and going from one thought to the next, 
simply seeing each thought as it comes up in your mind as a thought and letting the thoughts just come and go as you sit and dwell in stillness witnessing them observing them whatever they are just observing them as events in the field of your consciousness as they come into your awareness and they linger and as they dissolve if you find yourself at any point drawn into this stream of thinking and you notice that you are no longer observing them just come back to observing them as events and using your breathing and the sense of your body to anchor you and stabilize you in the present. These thoughts can take any form, they can have any content, and they can be either neutral or very highly charged. If thoughts come up that have fear in them, just be aware of fear being here. Letting these thumbs, these thoughts come and go. Same for worries, preoccupations, and so on. Regardless of the feeling that the thought might create for you, just observing it as simply a thought and letting it be here without pursuing it or without rejecting it. Notice that from moment to moment, new thoughts will come and go. And as the meditation ends, you might give yourself credit for having spent this time nourishing yourself in a deep way by dwelling in this state of non-doing, in this state of being, for having intentionally made time for yourself to simply be who you are. And as you move back into the world, allow the benefits of this practice to expand into every aspect of your life. And that's our sitting guided meditation for today. I hope it helps. And of course, since this is a podcast, you can come back and refer to it anytime you need to.